Hey guys, what's going on? Spipricks here, back for another LEGO video, and today I thought we could check out what's been trending over on r slash LEGO and take a look at the top 20 posts from this last month. Now honestly, this subreddit never fails to amaze me. It's packed with amazing LEGO creations and genius innovations using LEGO bricks. So if you go on to enjoy today's video, please take two seconds to leave a like rating down below. I think we'll start with the 20th most upvoted post and work our way up to number one. So let's go ahead and get started. After two years of designing and redesigning, I have completed my hangar style desk. Oh wow, look at that. Now that is a really awesome workstation. Wow, okay, so it looks like this individual has the 2007 UCS Millennium Falcon set, I believe, based on the minifigures that are pictured here. And uh, he cut a hole in the top of his desk and used the drawer below it, it looks like, to place the Lego set in there. And then I believe, if we look closely at this image, I think it's got glass maybe over the top of it. That is really clever. This is the sort of stuff that I just get excited about. It's so cool seeing people do this and use Lego bricks and display them in different ways. But you know, actually something cool that I've seen is people using LED light strips around their Lego displays. And that would look really cool if he just got like a white one or maybe even a red one. I don't know where the Millennium Falcon is at this point, but put that around the build inside that sort of like drawer compartment that would look pretty sick love this beauty created by awk bricks okay so we have a mock here that is a pretty clean looking mock i wonder if is this based on is this based on an actual house that's you know been built somewhere let me i'm, I'm gonna look it up okay so it turns out it is based on a model but the house itself wasn't ever built. It was just kind of like this creative uh, brainstorming idea by a few architects. But basically we have this created with Lego, but that is a very cool build. I'd love to have that set. That's for sure if that was an official one, I should say. Dreadful brick separator. Okay, wow, that is a really large model of a brick separator. Kind of looks like, you know, using pieces from the Millennium Falcon or the Death Star, that sort of thing is very like Star Wars themed, Lego Star Wars here. Oh, there's even two little brick separators at the very bottom there. Wow, that, that's, that's actually kind of cool. I don't know if this is a dreadful brick separator. I think this is a very creative and very well built brick separator. Wait, this, this could be like, this is the UCS brick separator. If you guys want to buy the UCS brick separator, you know, just $500, that's all. I thought I might share this. Okay, so we have our very first video looking at this subreddit here, and we have a Darth Vader minifigure who is walking his, I guess you could say, pet AT-AT. That's pretty funny. Wow, that, that's really cool. There are some cool motorized functions that LEGO builders are able to create. A lot of creativity here. I think this is pretty creative. This could really work with a lot of different ideas if you had. Once you have this basic structure down, you could really make anything, you know, in place of that AT-AT. -AT. I wanted a better way to display the individual stages of the Saturn V. A few hours of 3D printing later, and this is his result. So I think he made little attachments that would attach on the wall and, you know, clamp around the pieces or the different sections, I should say, of the Saturn V rocket. I mean, that's how it would break apart, right? Whenever it's launching into the air, into space. That's pretty clever and definitely a cool display piece. Definitely a attention getter as well, having that on your wall. Yeah, I like how this came out. I think that there are a lot of Lego sets like this that you could mount on the wall in clever ways. Swimming dolphins and other things. Okay, let's check out this video. So it looks like we have dolphins that move up and down via the motor functions. Okay, we've got some orcas as well, some other things. Emmet, okay, that's funny. Yeah, you put anything there, I guess, or some sharks there at the very end. Very clever. Yeah, these the motorized functions, like I said, there's a lot of possibilities with that. Stranger things happened when I attempted to build a Lego tensegrity structure. Oh yeah, okay, so I've seen a lot of these lately. This is like the new Lego trend or something to create these sort of anti-gravity or defying gravity sort of Lego creations. I honestly think these are incredible and there's so many different themes that Lego builders are able to create. This one here, obviously Stranger Things, it works out perfectly, of course. When you first see one of these tensegrity structures built out of Lego bricks, it kind of just blows your mind for a bit. I mean, it did for me until I really figured out exactly what was happening here in I guess you could say the physics behind this build and basically it has all the tension that's supporting the entire structure in those chains there which is really holding everything together very incredible stuff 
I was trying to find the thinnest quote unquote legal way of reversing directions of plates. This is what I came up with. Okay, well, right off the bat, I see where this is going, and I can tell you that nothing like this where you're trying to reverse the studs on a plate or a brick is ever going to be legal in LEGO standards, pretty much, until, you know, something major happens. But do whatever you want. I, I have nothing against it, that's for sure. But this one here, using two plates and then using some of those, like, saw blade pieces, I think that works pretty well. I think there are other, a few other different techniques. I've went over a couple on my second channel, if you guys don't follow me over there at Two Bricks. I did a video over there a couple months ago on some band Lego techniques. You guys all really seem to enjoy it. These are really cool. Happy Earth Day from my tiny Wally. That's a cute little build, that's for sure. Small mock, that's for sure, when compared to the other things we've looked at in this video, but very cute, accurate actually, if you really look at it and take it in terms of the scale of it and how minimal it is and how accurate though at the same time it is. Finally completed Star Wars Imperial Star Destroyer today. Yeah, that is a huge set. That's a massive accomplishment too. I've seen a few people build this. I don't have this set personally, but there are a lot of pieces in it. And I'll tell you the one reason why I would just never build this set is because it just, there's too many light gray pieces. It just doesn't look like a very, I, I don't know, in my opinion, it doesn't look like a very fun build for me per se, you know, considering like what I like to build in Lego sets and that sort of thing. I love big models, but just not whenever they all look all the pieces are the same color and that sort of thing. I don't know. Seems repetitive in my mind, but nonetheless, congratulations to you because that is a big accomplishment to create and fully build this set. Tensegrity tie stand. Okay, so now we're going on to some more of these Tensegrity Lego builds. We got a video here and it looks like they used a Lego Star Wars TIE Fighter and actually created it using this technique of sort of like anti-gravity levitating. That looks really cool. See, this is the sort of stuff that really works that I really like with this Tensegrity anti-gravity Lego construction builds just because it it's accurate, right? You have a TIE Fighter, it should be flying through the air and this is as close as you're gonna get to that. Finally put my Millennium Falcon in place. All right, we have another display case here for the Millennium Falcon. I mean, you got to have something cool in order to display this monstrosity of a build. Using it with his kind of like bookshelf here, he's got a guitar next to it. Definitely a centerpiece whenever you go into that room. Once again, talking point, very nice. The fastest Lego alive. Yeah, that is a cool picture there, using the bricks behind him to kind of create that effect. There are some really cool LEGO photography people that I follow like on Instagram and stuff. They have some incredible work and I really do like this technique here that they're using. Today I made my own version of dot 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 that thing. What's it called again? Well, we know it's Tensegrity structure. Here it is. And this one is one of my favorites that I've seen. I saw it before I looked at this post here. I saw it on a different website that I was checking out, looking at some of these, you know, a couple weeks ago, I think it was at this point. It's like an Indiana Jones sort of themed one. And I like how these look with the different chains there and just the overall aesthetic of it. It looks like something you'd really find in like the Indiana Jones movie or video game or that sort, or the Lego Indiana Jones video game. I guess we could put it at that. And just a good continuation of this overall theme here of anti-gravity Lego. 2001 A Space Odyssey. Okay, so this is definitely from a movie. I will flash on the corresponding scene on screen right now so you guys can see the two. And it's actually very accurate. I'd actually like to see this kind of like zoomed out to see the actual structure itself and what this Lego builder created in order to get this shot instead of just so close up. That would be kind of a, like behind the scenes sort of look. And I'd be curious to see that. Spent a month in lockdown trying to build the UCS Millennium Falcon only using pieces we have. Finished just in time for May the 4th. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a wacky and very bizarre looking UCS Millennium Falcon, but that's incredible. You were able to find enough pieces. I don't know if it's, you know, complete. There may be some pieces still missing, I'd assume so, but perhaps he has all of them. And if he does, that's pretty incredible. He has to have a huge Lego collection if he was able to find every single piece needed. Imagine how long that would take. Like you'd find, you know, you need a single piece and then you got to figure out, well, what set even has that? I guess you'd use some resources such as brick set and brick link and that sort. But overall, this would take a lot of time. And I guess though, considering what our situation is right now in quarantine and all that sort of stuff, this was a good time use as just, you know, trying to fill some time and not be bored. My one in 3,312th scale Millennium Falcon mock. 
that that is a high quality mock right there that deserves to be in a museum i don't think anybody would ever be able to create anything as astonishing as that i'm just gonna leave it there my son and i are proud to present sky castle all right another tensegrity structure i'm down for that this one has like a floating island with a castle on the very top of quote unquote you know sky castle that's what they called it i like how this one came out for sure very cool to just, you know, spend some time and try and create some of this stuff, but like you've seen in this video, this is definitely the trend of LEGO in the past month, that's why you've seen so many. My little brother's attempt at the Imperial Shuttle using what he can find from his LEGO tub. Alright, so we have another mock using improvising skills here, using what he has in his LEGO tub to try and create as closely as possible the LEGO Star Wars Imperial Shuttle. That is pretty good for just using, I guess, you know, based on what I can see here, very basic Lego pieces. You can use the, like, the cockpit down there, you guys can see, for the very front of the Imperial Shuttle. That's very clever. And the fact, wait, he was even able to get it to fold up and go back out. Some good building techniques here for sure. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a cool accomplishment. And here's the most upvoted post on r slash lego from the last month with 32.2 thousand upvotes. Lego Tensegrity Structure. I mean, honestly, considering how many of these we've already seen in this video, I'm not surprised that the top ranking post for this month on r slash lego is a tensegrity structure. This one looks like it's a more simplistic design, more so just with the basics and using a lot of Technic pieces instead. And like I said earlier, not all of them need to use chains, but instead can use just, you know, string you have as well, in which that's what this one does. So that's very cool. Keep it simplistic, basically almost a symmetrical build actually here. Very cool, and overall, I think that this subreddit in all that we've just looked at all these posts from really gives us a good overview of what the LEGO community has really been interested in in this past month during quarantine. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know with a like rating down below. And also, I need your guys' feedback in the comments whether I should do more Reddit videos on LEGO here. Maybe next month we should come back to r slash LEGO and look at the next top 20 posts. But I need to hear your guys' feedback down below, so let me know. As always, I'm Spipricks. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video coming very soon.